We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Mark. Based on advice, Mark decided to buy RBH's Impression Series speakers in the Red Burl finish to replace his NHT Super Zeros and Super One speakers. Yeah, sounds like a yeah much work. higher output. No question about that. Uh, no, there's no doubt. After receiving them, he's found that the center speaker is too wide for the space where it must go. Mm. Ooh. Too wide is a problem. Too tall, you can sometimes do something about, but too wide is an issue. Uh, he called RBH, and RB, the RBH rep suggested that he use two bookshelf speakers turned on their sides in lieu of the center speaker. Is this a good solution? The Impression Series Center has four uh, drivers and a tweeter, while the double bookshelf option would have two woofers and two tweeters. Did he get the big one? Is there? Is that the big one? They, they only sell the big one now. Uh, the 56 CI. They don't sell the little guy anymore. They don't smell the little one anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with what this, what they said told you to do. I don't agree with that. Yeah, I can't wholeheartedly agree with it either. Uh, once you have two tweeters both playing this, well, yeah. I guess you could go in there and manually disconnect one of the tweeters. <laughs> That's, you know, you, you could, could totally do that. You could pop out a tweeter and just undo the wires to one undo of the Undo the tweeters. wires in the back, yeah. That just make work. sure they're not, you know, wrap them up in something. Make sure they're not touching each other or anything. What I would suggest, they only sell the bookshelf speakers in pairs, so that's fine, but they're not super expensive. I would try just one. I would try just one because I'm assuming the reason they're saying try two is because he has the towers. So the uh, output capability, obviously, of one bookshelf speaker is not going to match the output capability of one of the towers, but maybe he doesn't need the full output capability. Maybe he's still gonna have to lie it on its side, though. Yeah, but that's I mean, fine. I mean, one bookshelf on its side. I would give it a try first because yeah. if that has enough output capability, that's a inexpensive, easy. The finish still matches, the timbre still matches, and that's easy, right. and you're done. If it turns out you need the extra output capability, you could wire the two of them in series and just physically disconnect one of the tweeters yourself. That's right. Uh, that'll get rid of that. Now, the reason we don't like the dual tweeters is because the wavelengths they're producing are very, very short. And now you have two of them that you're probably going to like lie them down side by side so the tweeters are as close to each other as possible. But the distance between those two tweeters is still going to be longer than the wavelengths they're producing, which means you get some weird interference patterns. Some very weird right. interference patterns. And that's actually the problem with Axiom centers that include two tweeters that are like on opposite ends of the speaker cabinet for some reason and they sound awful uh <laughs> no no one no one no one understands why that design is that way it was you know, purely for no output but i i just no one understands that. the other thing you could i mean it's a very odd solution but you could try the split center idea which is something they use for like uh magna planar or electrostatic right. speakers that you can't turn sideways they actually yeah. put one speaker right as close as you can to the each side of the screen and so you have two speakers directly on either side of the screen playing in mono together and that way right. as long as you're in between the two of them they sound like mono they sound like they're coming from the center you could give that a try with two bookshelf speakers but or you could just not deal with any of this and run a phantom center you could just run a phantom center that is, I, correct. That is the first solution i would do mm. <laughs> i would unplug the i would not hook up the center channel and then try phantom center and see if you can live with it you i mean especially if you're the back. only one who cares, which is very yeah. often the case, oh and you God, get the money seat started. directly in yeah. the middle, and you get great phantom center imaging, then you're going to be all set. Yes, everyone sitting to the left and right of you might get the center image slightly off from where it's supposed to be, but if they're the type of people who don't care, yeah. which is so often the case, uh, then then that works very easily. Yeah, I would I would consider that. Yeah. that. That's the first thing I would do. I do like Rob, Rob's idea of putting... It depends on the size of your screen, really, and mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. but... It, uh, Putting the two of them close together, uh, as close as you can to the screen. Disconnecting yeah. one tweeter. Oh, I see. no, no, oh, I either mean, side. The split yeah, center. Yeah, it's a split center. I like that idea. I do like the idea of using one, and I do like the idea if you're going to use one, two, disconnect the tweeter on one. Um, I don't like the idea of just using two, and lying in the middle of the side and putting the tweeters close together. I think it's about. Yeah, idea. you get some weird interference stuff up high. Lastly, he asks, any suggestions for any other options to consider? Anything besides RBH that could closely match both the timbre and the red burl finish? Well, there's your problem there, Haas, is the red burl finish. Yeah, you're not going to match uh, that. You're not going to match it. So what you're looking for is any old speaker that is you know, either pretty 
or pretty, de- you know, nondescript. Yeah. I so mean, I was th- thinking if you just go for a black center speaker, yeah. then, you know, I mean, black is going to contrast well with anything that you get. So What you want to look for is uh, RBH is very neutral. Yeah. So they will play nice with most things. Yeah. So what you're looking for is a speaker that doesn't have a sound of its own. So golden ear, out of the running. Uh, <laughs> Klipsch, Kl- out of the running. Klipsch, <laughs> out of the running. B- uh, Bang & Olufsen, out of the running. But there's lots of them out there that are fairly neutral and that you'll mm-hmm. be fine with. Aperion. Yeah. Pick something from that was my, my first thought was Aperion's Intimus 5C. Really nice go. center speaker design. Uh, now, he didn't mention if height is a problem. I, I would caution you to look at the dimensions because it's not a super short You haven't learned center. your lesson this time. We can't make you learn it. It's that's for sure. <laughs> tweeter above a mid, uh, above a, a dedicated mid-range driver, mm-hmm. so uh, so the height. But the width is certainly less wide than the RBH uh, center, so that way. But it comes in black. It comes in a matte black version and a gloss black version. Uh, I wouldn't tr- even remotely try to match the red burl finish no. on those EMPs because it's, it's not just not going to happen. Uh, uh, Aperion, uh, uh, Aperion audio, uh, let me think, SVS speakers would probably be fine too. Mm. Uh, they're not very, they're voiced pretty well. Yeah. Uh, again, you'd only have black. Yeah. Black. Any of the blacks. So, I mean, there's a lot of them out there that are a fairly neutral sounding speaker. Yeah. Uh, but I think that you can maybe get away with not having one at all. I think that's probably going to be the solution. Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.